Hello and welcome to Keolite. How is everybody doing? Let me know in the comments below while I tell you today's quote. Today's quote is a long one, but it's very important, especially with what's happening today. The environment is so fundamental to our continued existence that it must transcend politics and become a central value of all members of society. So I will say that again slowly. Um, the environment is so fundamental to our continued existence that it must transcend politics and become a central value of all members of society. Um, if you know who the author of this quote is, please comment below. I will reveal the author towards the end. Um, and please do not Google this. Okay, let's start our show. Hello again, my name is Ashwati, and if you're joining us for the first time, Kia Live is an interactive series where we guide you through your journey to Canada as an international student. Every week, we'll be talking about international student life, Canadian higher education, admissions, and much more. We also will be talking about the Kale test. If you're wondering what the Kale test is, um, it is an academic English language test for Canada. The difference between this and other English tests is that this can only be taken by students wishing to pursue their education in Canada. This test is accepted and preferred by over 180 institutions, and it can now be taken online at home. Today, we're talking about virtual classes. International students pursuing their higher education this semester will mostly be taking their classes online. For many, that means tuning into classes from their home country. So different time zones, different internet connections, and many other hurdles that they have to cross before actually being able to attend a class. So to help students cope with the stress of all this, we invited Dr. Mike Atkinson from Western University. Um, Western University is located in London, Ontario. He will share his expertise on how to cope with online learning challenges. Let's go say hello to him. Hi, how are you doing today? Hello, Dr. Mike. First of all, welcome to Kale Live. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing quite fine, thank you. It's um, a kind of a uh, sort of a sort of a hazy, sunny afternoon uh, down here in um, the London area, and uh, classes began yesterday, so we're all back at it now. Yes. So. Um, you know, I know that you are also also now taking online classes. Um, how many students will you be teaching virtually? Okay, so I teach introductory psychology, and uh, my class now has been basically uh, collapsed across all sections of intro. So my class is three thousand students. <laughs> Sorry, guys slight technical difficulty. I was muted, but I was saying wow to the amount of classes that Dr. Mike, I mean, the amount of students that Dr. Mike is teaching. Um, so Mike, Dr. Mike, before I kind of talk to you about questions pertaining to our topic, could you just tell us a little bit about your day-to-day -day, um, at, your, at your role at Western University? Mm -hmm. So as I indicated, uh, uh, I teach introductory psychology at Western. Uh, it's one of the things that I do there. I'm also involved in the Center for Teaching and Learning. And um, one of my roles there is to teach other instructors how what the best practices are, uh, both for face-to-face -face and some online training as well. And so we do a lot of that kind of thing. So that's really my two big roles uh, for this year and probably for next year as well. Oh, great. So you, you know, we're talking about virtual classes and this is the perfect time to kind of yeah. like introduce the difference between, you know, what, so we know what a basic difference is between like online classes and, and you know, in-person classes, but what are some of the other things that, you know, people tend to overlook? And in general, what does, like, if you could give us an introduction to what an online class is and how it's different from a day-to-day -day class, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a really good point because usually what happens is you come to class, you're used to showing up at a particular time and the instructor is there and we have class. So my class used to be Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, at, right now, actually, at 1.30. And uh, so all of the information I could you know, basically give in that kind of time slot 
And I would put um, extra material online that students could have a look at. Uh, my lectures were online so that they could review them and so on. That's all changed now. And so most of the, if not all of the large first year courses at Western have gone virtual. Uh, we cannot have that many people in a room anymore. Uh, my class used to be 800 in a room, uh, but the maximum class size allowed now is uh, right around 50, 60. So we just can't do that kind of thing. So we've all gone to virtual. What that means is now everything's online. Uh, some people are doing synchronous lectures. Um, some people are doing asynchronous material. And um, I'm doing a combination of both. So I'm not doing a live lecture in my class. Uh, all of my lectures now are canned, they're online, they're available as video on demand. And um, I appear uh, from time to time on the site doing other sorts of things. Uh, just if you, in case you're wondering, one of the reasons I do that is that yes, I have 3,000 students and we're, we're across maybe uh, 10 or 12 different time zones. So I can't do a lot, and I have people logging in from China. And so I can't do any live lectures because I can't find the time that will work for everybody. So everything's online. So now you have to go online and try to navigate through the course that way. And that can pose some challenges to people. We can talk a little bit about that. You spoke about students tuning in from China um, oh. and you know other international countries, which is an important point to note because, you know, this is a new experience for them. This is a new experience for everybody, but especially an, online, an international student who's like interested to come to a new country, learn yeah. about new cultures. This is a new experience. So what are the few things that international students need to consider before starting their online course? Sure. I mean, it's, it, it can be very difficult. And one of the things that we send out for my course, for example, is I need you to know what kind of technical requirements you're going to need. Uh, what kind of, almost literally what kind of bandwidth you're going to need in order to log in and get the stuff. There's a lot of video on my site. So you, you, you've got to have um, um, a good, stable internet connection and a decent laptop in order to get that. And that can be challenging for some students, right? Uh, so that, that makes it very, very difficult. One of the things that we do, and a lot of uh, people at Western have done, is all of my videos are closed captioned. So that if that starts to become a problem, you can turn off the video and just watch the text. And uh, at least you can see that that way, but it's obviously a slightly different experience. So I think one of the, the things to get a handle on is particularly for people who are um, joining class internationally is to make sure that we're in some kind of time zone that's comfortable for you. Uh, if you're joining, if, uh, I should say, by the way, a, a lot of students have physically come to London. And um, uh, I think we had 3,800 this year who actually showed up of the 5,800 who are uh, first year entry class students into uh, Western University. So there's a lot of students who are on campus and they would be logging in from on campus. But I think um, international students, whether they're here, whether they're logging in from a foreign country, are gonna have similar issues. And I think that those issues revolve around language, number one. Number two, expectations. A lot of people are used to uh, me, the instructor saying, okay, here's what you gotta do to succeed. And I'm going to tell you that now, but you have to take it to heart. You have to read everything that I post and it, you have to be a lot more self-motivating. And that can be very difficult, especially if you're struggling with other issues such as language issues. Yeah. And it's a good thing you brought this point about self-motivation because that was kind of what I wanted to go into next. You, you know, with online classes, like you said, international students are don't have the opportunities that they used to have as opposed to like being here physically so for example if somebody is in their home country you know apart from the education how do they make friends and because a part of international education is being exposed to new cultures and experiences so how can they kind of make the most of the situation and you know have at least the similar experiences they would have had they been here that's going to be really really tough uh, especially, I mean, obviously for the students, my students who are on campus, they will have some ability to do that. But uh, because of COVID, everything's severely restricted and uh, that's going to be, be tough. Like the main cafeteria on campus is not open and I don't believe it's going to open this year. And that's where most people hung around and things. So that makes it tough. Uh, we're going to try to um, help students a little bit so that even though in my case, my lectures are all asynchronous and posted, we have uh, 100 tutorial sections. 
uh, that uh, students are. So we've got 30 people in a section uh, led by my teaching assistants. They're all live on Zoom, just like we're doing now. So that's going to help people a little bit uh, have a more normal, quote unquote, uh, interaction with individuals, but it's still kind of tough. Um, the, one of the ways that I'm going to get around that a bit is I try to get students to think a little bit more about what's going on in the world. I really liked your quote at the beginning uh, because we need we have time now to think about these things. So one of the things that I've done is on each of my um, topics on each of my uh, particular sessions that we're in, um, and when you go to chapter one or chapter two or whatever, I have a segment called The World Has Changed. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on and I'm going to talk about what's happened in the last six months that we never expected. And for me, what psychology can say about it. You know, that is a great tip because, you know, by doing that, you're, A, we are kind of like building the bond between like a professor and students and then students and mom, but also it's like therapy in a way, like you're able to like talk your feelings out and you talk your uh, talk whatever you're feeling you know you've been cooped up in the house you want to talk yeah. to somebody about this you know you've already spoken to your family and you know you want to hear other people's opinion you want to know what other people are thinking so I think that is a great that's a really good idea yeah. and you know like this makes a good segue to our next question <coughs> is that how do we kind of like I guess this is your answer but I want to know if you have any other plans up your sleeve like how do we deal with anxiety and uncertainty of online classes, especially for international students who are paying the fees that they are paying. How do we kind of, how do we give them tips to cope with this, you know, this uncertainty? That's a, just this is a really, really good question. So I'm gonna, I've got a couple of things that I can mention. I'm, I'm going to start with make sure that whatever class you're in, you go very quickly and go over the syllabus, of the course outline for that course, find out what what, 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 what kind of exams are you taking? What's going on there? Uh, a lot of people are used to going into, say, for, in my class, big classes, doing multiple choice exams. Um, I've had to cut that back severely. So now there's a lot of other things happening. Uh, so there will still be some multiple choice exams. But now there's a lot more discussions. There's a lot more um, stuff uh, taking place in tutorials that you're going to get graded on. So I, I, number one is I want you to be familiar as a student what is it that you're going to be graded on? And that's particularly true for international students. Uh, for example, in my class with these uh, tutorials, you will be graded on participation on screen. And so that could be tough. A lot of people have difficulty with that and it does make a lot of people anxious. And my tip for that would be to whoever's um, uh, running uh, the live lecture, in my case, my tutorial, um, talk to the uh, teaching assistant and say, hey, look, uh, I'd rather participate by chat if that's okay. And so, right, so you can do that. I'm okay with that. And I think students should check that out. So if you don't want to be talking live on a screen and you'd rather be typing, I'm sure that's going to be okay for just about anybody. You know, that's great that you're doing that. And because I really wanted to know what people, what international students can do to kind of like, because, you know, normally, even if you're not internationally, even if you like very familiar with people around you, speaking anxiety is a thing, especially if you're speaking online, because you don't like in a physical situation, you don't look at yourself when you're speaking, but now you do. So you're twice as more anxious. And it's great that you're letting people chat, which is amazing for to get them get over their initial kind of like, you know, yeah. warm ups. But but speaking is also a part of education. So like, you know. Absolutely. Speaking. And so, we, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we would like people to do that as much as they can. So again, in tutorials, that's, I, I want you to be speaking like this. And matter of fact, if you were in my tutorial, I'd be saying, okay, whatever topic we're having today, um, what do you think about the following topic? Give me, give me your opinion. And so I'm gonna actually, so it's not just, we're here to chat about stuff. Uh, I'm gonna ask you for your opinion on very specific and pointed kinds of things. And so I'm gonna get you to, to do that. Uh, you have to think about what's gonna go on in discussion. We'll post that beforehand so students can, uh, can be uh, into that. But that's just in my course. I want students to be familiar with all the other courses they're taking. Like, how are you gonna be evaluated? Is that okay for you? If not, talk to the professor and find out, is there an alternative that I can use? And try to get around it in that sort of way. Do it now because classes are just starting and find out what's going on when you're getting in there. 
Thank you for that. Um, so sure. for people who are just tuning in, this is Dr. Mike from Western University, and he is talking to us about coping with challenges of online education. So uh, Dr. Mike, one thing that I wanted to ask you when we were talking about this, you said mm -hmm. that your classes are asynchronized, but you also have like a tutorial where you're having uh, your assistant go live. Um, mm -hmm. This is more of a technical question. Sure. If people, since, you know, this, because of online education and because of, because I'm sure a lot of institutions are also doing asynchronized classes, yeah. what, are we accommodating for the delay in, in learning? So, you know, asking questions will not be like, you won't be, your questions won't be answered directly. You'll have to wait for a few days before, or maybe a few hours before your question is answered. Or if you're really like, you know, even grading or things like that, or like mm -hmm. critiquing and feedback. So are we accommodating for that? And are we making leeways for that? Yeah, I, th I know I am, and I hope other people are too. So for example, one of the things is um, in my course, I have a specific email address that students can uh, uh, type questions into. One of my TAs, says their entire job is to look at that 24 seven and answer those questions. And so, well, maybe not 24 seven, but so that your questions are gonna be answered either by me, uh, by uh, Dr. Laura Fazekas the who's another uh, instructor in the course, uh, by my uh, TA who's looking after that, or any of the other TAs who happen to go in. So we, we all take responsibility to go and try to answer those questions as quickly as possible. So I don't want you sitting online saying, hey, look, I don't know how to get started here and hear from me a week later because that's not going to help you at all. Um, I want to try to make sure that happens right away. So another thing that students can do is specifically for their online course, is, <coughs> excuse me, find out what the instructor's policy is on answering email. Uh, they may say, look, I'll answer your email within this time frame. And so that you know that that kind of thing is going to happen. Uh, find out what kinds of other options are for you to ask questions and how to get that information. Because I think that, again, that'll, that's going to reduce anxiety if you as a student know what I can do, when I can do it. And because I know sometimes, um, and this is particularly true, I, I often see from international students, is they'll post a question and they're very respectful to me. And so they'll try, you know what I'm saying? So they're trying to make sure that they don't ask questions. Sorry to bother you about this and so on. And But I know that they're really anxious. So uh, I think that find out what my policy is, find out what other policies are so that you can go ahead and ask that question. And if you know that um, I, I will answer you within 24 hours, then you don't have to worry that because I didn't answer you right away that I'm ignoring you. That kind of thing is very important. Yeah, that's a good tip. So, you know, especially for people who are watching, do ask questions, do not hesitate to make, and do not hesitate to ask questions, but also make sure that you're very well aware of what's happening in the school and what the school is yes. wanting out of you and what you want out of the school. I have another question, and sure. this is kind of similar. You may have answered this before, but this is more about cultural and familiarity. So, you know, when you, like, for, for example, the first time I went, went to the US from India for my education, it took me a while to kind of get used to the colloquial language to see what people mean when they say a certain thing, especially that you you gave the reference of like people being respectful. That is something that we do very often in India. But, you know, so it was very unnerving for me to see that students were referring to their professors on first name, first name basis. So, sure. you know, this is something that you get used to when you're physically in a country. But how, what can people do to kind of get over this cultural and familiarity from home, like online? What do they have to refer to something or, you know, just talk to themselves about this? What can they do? I think, uh, once again, I think two things are important here. One is um, uh, certainly online in our, our system, there's a general discussion where students can chat amongst themselves. Um, and that uh, I typically don't monitor unless it's, <clears throat> it's sort of like a coffee house kind of thing. Uh, so they can talk about it there, try to figure what's going on. The other thing I'm gonna say is, have a look at uh, what your instructor looks like online. So for example, uh, I don't have a tie on. Um, I'm fairly laid back and you call me Dr. Mike and when I sign things, I call it Dr. Mike as well. So you know I'm pretty informal and so you don't have to worry about that kind of barrier. Uh, other people, if they're um, uh, teaching, and it's the same in face-to-face, -face, if uh, your instructor is a male wearing a suit and tie, yeah, they're probably a whole lot more formal than I am and need that, the, that kind of formality that you might be used to. It's tough to get over those things. Uh, by the way, it's tough for all of us the other way around. I've spent a lot of time in, in uh, Africa and Pakistan as well. And uh, it, yeah, it takes me a little while, you know, 
there are, there are things that I used to do that I can't do anymore. And um, so it, it's uncomfortable for me doing that kind of thing as well. You know, that's good. I actually do want to talk about this a little more. I want to know how teachers are coping with this. Teachers and professors are coping with this online, um, you know, education thing. Like, are you prepared? Like, do you have to spend days preparing or did you go to Zoom? Did you take Zoom lessons? Like, what did you do? <laughs> we do. We offer Zoom lessons uh, for that. I mean, there's a lot of instructors are very anxious themselves about what they're doing. They've never done anything like this before. And so now they've been forced to transition to online. Uh, at Western, we try to help everybody through the uh, Center for Teaching and Learning. So we'll help you get your stuff online so that uh, at least it makes some sense uh, for people and they, you don't have to figure it all out yourself. But a lot of instructors have never done this before. They're quite uncomfortable. That, uh, uh, and I think they're going to have a hard time. Uh, I see a lot of instructor anxiety, not just student anxiety. And um, we actually have told people or given people some advice on um, how to take care of yourself during this as well. You often think about taking care of other people, but you gotta take care of yourself and try to understand what's going on, what's happening. And um, you yourself have to worry about that. So I, I do see a lot of that happening. And so students should also be aware that sometimes if an um, instructor seems a little weird, <laughs> On online, it's probably because they're not used to it either, and they're having a tough time. Yeah, it's all give and take, guys. I just this question I asked is because I just wanted to kind of like highlight the fact that this is new for everybody, and it's yeah. good to know how hard universities are also working to make sure that they're their from their side, you know, their professors are comfortable and students are made comfortable. So thank you for saying that. Um, and, you know, we've come to the end of our questions, but I do have one last question for you. Sure. Um, I would like to know what is your favorite thing about working with international students choosing to study in Canada? Wow, what a, that's a good question. You know, the, one of the things that uh, I'll couch it in two different ways. Uh, people often ask me why I'm interested in teaching first year all the time. And that's because then I teach first year psychology. I've been teaching that for 30 some odd years now. And I teach, uh, I'm so interested in that because I find first year students ask me the most interesting questions. And the questions are, and because there are things like I'll talk about something and they'll say like, why would anybody want to know that? And you know, we, and we don't think about that. We, we think about all kinds of other things. And I think that those are the most important questions. International students are the same in that kind of way. Because not only do they have the, why do we want to know that, but why do you want to know it like that? And so to me, that's so interesting uh, to find out how people are used to um, getting information, processing information, which could be totally different from the way that I do. And so the more I know about international students, the more I can hopefully explain better to them. So I, I really, really want to learn that kind of stuff myself. Great. So an aspect of personal growth there, um, mm. you know, again, a give and take metaphor here works really well. You're teaching international students and they're teaching you as well, which is perfect. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mike, and answering wow. all of the questions. Um, and also, I'm really glad that you're here. So for those of you who don't know, Dr. Mike also came for self Live and he spoke about testing anxiety, which I will link in the description below for you to check out. Um, all around uh, a powerhouse of information. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Harriet, for having me today. Good luck, everybody. Have a great year. Okay, so that was Dr. Mike. And if you missed out on asking questions live, please ask us in the comments below and we will get around to asking um, our next guest or you know, we'll be able to answer your questions as well. Um, I feel like this episode is really important because I know a lot of you um, international students will be tuning in from home um, this semester. So please make sure you send this video to anybody else you think might find it useful, especially students who are starting their education abroad. We received a few comments about the, about Kale lessons. So I just wanted to let you know here that Kale test lessons will be on a separate playlist on our channel and it will be given by Brandy, of course. Um, it's called Kale Prep with Brandy and we drop a lesson every Tuesday. Do check it out. It is not live, but you can definitely ask your questions in the comments. And when Brandy does come live, we will make sure we ask her all your questions.
As always, you can ask your questions anywhere in the comments below, in any other KLI video uh, you see on YouTube, but you can also interact with us on social media. Um, our Instagram handle is at KLTest, and we're quite active there. We try to interact with as many of you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send us a DM at KLTest on Instagram. Okay, it is now time to find out who the author of our quote is. So, in the beginning of this session, I asked um, you, I told you a quote. It's a very long quote. The environment is so fundamental to our continued existence that it must transcend politics and become a central value of all members of society. Um, the reason we thought that this would be a good time to share this quote is because if you're interested to know what's happening right now in this current scenario, uh, the author of this quote wrote a very good book on this. So David Suzuki is the person who wrote, who, meant, who wrote this quote, and he is a Canadian academic and environmental activist. And the book that I'm talking about is The Sacred Balance, Rediscovering Our Place in Nature. A very important book for this time, um, so do check it out. Sacred Balance, Rediscovering Our Place in Nature. So we've come to the end of our show. I just want to mention lastly that if you are an international student living abroad or in Canada, you may be eligible for the Kale Scholarship. Um, if you took the Kale test on or after July 2020, or if you're about to take the test, um, you can win 5,000 Canadian dollars towards your tuition. Um, I will link our scholarship page below. You can check it out. Again, if you have any questions, you know what to do. In our next episode, we will be continuing to explore virtual classes. Um, so join us on Thursday, September 17th at 11 a.m. PST. And please also invite anybody else who is interested in studying in Canada. And please do subscribe to our channel as well and click on the bell icon to make sure you receive regular notifications. So until then, please stay safe and have a nice weekend. Bye.